us say, God, what, what are you showing me here? What are you teaching me here? What positive thing can I bring out of this situation? We need to refocus on Christ because as we do, <clears throat> he will remind us that we're to think in these things, the noble things, the good things, the purposeful things, the reason he created us. You see, we all, as we said about Eli, have abilities, have strengths, have talents. Hopefully I can get this to play, but here, here's a guy that has some strengths and talents. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you are looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. So there's a man with a particular set of skills. And God has given us a particular set of skills. He has given us abilities. Hopefully, we're not going to use them to hunt someone down and kill them. Hopefully, we're going to use them in a positive light. But wouldn't it be a shame to waste what God has given us? Wouldn't it be a shame to free wheel through life and get to the end and God say to us, Look, I put all that destiny in you. I put all that gifting in you. I put all that ability in you. This is what I was wanting you to do, and we don't do it. Because each one of us have a God-given shape. When I was in America, I talked about this one time. They thought I said a God-given ship, S-H-I-P. But we have a God-given shape. Our spiritual gifts, our heart. You see, maybe you have a merciful heart. Maybe you have a giving heart. Maybe you have a faithful heart. We all have different abilities that we bring to the table. We all have different personalities. We all have different experiences. Just like your mom, what did you call your man from Balamina here? Liam Neeson. Just like Liam Neeson, we all have experiences and a particular set of skills. And as the psalmist said, my frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and into. into intricately and skillfully formed as if embroidered with many colors. And in your book were all written the days that were appointed for me when as yet there were not one of them even taking shape. <clears throat> and so we look at Eli and we say, what is he going to be? We look at our own kids. What, what, a, what, a, what are they going to be? We look at our own lives sometimes and think, I missed it somewhere here. And I had all these dreams and aspirations. I, I seem to have missed the plot somewhere. I seem to have missed the turn somewhere. And so we need to get back on track again because once we discover our passion, once we discover our purpose, once we discover our potential, we are in our element. Uh, and I just love to meet people who are, who are in their element. Uh, we talk about the element for a fish is, the, is water, an element for the bird is, is air, is the sky. If you put a, a, a bird in the sea, It'll drown. If you put a fish on land, it will suffocate. And so for many of us, we're suffocating or we're drowning because we haven't got released into the fullness of our element, into our passion, into our purpose, and into our potential. And God so wants that for each one of us. See, it doesn't matter what's been written in your story or in your journal so far. It's how we fill up the rest of the pages that matters. So this is not a time for regret. This is not for a time for saying, well, woe is me. I'm 50 and my life's been rubbish. I'll be dead in a lot of years. What's it all about? It's not a time for saying that. It's a time for saying, this is, a, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is a new day. This is the first day of the rest of my life. Even though I haven't filled the pages as, as how I felt I should have filled them, I'm going to start and fill them afresh with Jesus. Amen. And so God is writing your story. Here's the big one. Do you trust him enough to let go of the pen? It's worth taking a photograph of that if you've got your camera. God is writing your story. You see, God can write our story or we can write our own story. 
And so many people think, I'm not going to have this man, as it was said in the Scriptures, to rule over me. They don't want God to, to poke his nose in their business. And then other people say, Lord, write the story of my life. Lead me, guide me, direct me, show me. And so God is wanting to write our story. Do you trust him enough to let go of the pen? What is the story of your life about? People don't tend to read books as much as they used to, but when I was a wee boy and we didn't have all this technical stuff, you had to read a book. We actually had a slate in Joe's day. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> But you know, what is, is, is your life a thriller? Is your life story a detective story? Is it an adventure story? Is it a, a rom-com for some of you, I think? <laughs> Is it, is it, what is it? God, for each one of us, God has a theme in our lives depending on our gifts and our abilities and our skills. Uh, when you look at Mother Teresa, well, what was the book of her life? It was serving and mercy, wasn't it? Uh, and so each one of us have so many skills and ability that become the theme of the book of our lives. And, and sometimes we don't think like this, but, it, but here's a great question to ask ourselves. What is the story of my journal, my book about, the book of my life. What's the main themes in it? What's chapter one? What's chapter two? Are there, are there different seasons in that? Because many of us go through different seasons. And so what's the story, your life story, all about? Our story is a powerful thing. The power of our story, our testimony. See, as we journal through life, as we journey through life, we create a story, we create a history, we create memories, we create all the things we've talked about. And as we tell other people about that, especially when we introduce Jesus into the story as he has come into our life, then all of a sudden, the power of our testimony, the power of our story can change people's lives. Uh, I remember Joe, I'm using Joe a lot today, but just something he said, he said, someone said to him, well, I don't believe all this Christianity stuff and he said, well, that's okay. But he said, you haven't felt what I have felt. That's a powerful testimony because the person going away from that conversation, well, what has he felt? It leaves that person feeling they're missing something, which is very powerful because it's the fear of loss, isn't it? They think, I'm missing something here. I, I, he has felt something I haven't felt. And so our testimony, maybe you've been healed, maybe you've been been saved from a really difficult life. Maybe you've been saved in it from a very ordinary religious life. It doesn't matter what it is. Our testimony, our story is a very powerful thing. And so with his story being Jesus and our story, we can make history. And so it's a bit corny, isn't it? But we can make history. We can make history in people's lives because we can introduce them to Jesus. I'm going to ask the band to come as we finish. Here's the good news. No matter what stage we're at in our lives, even in death, it's not the end of our story. It's not the end of the story. You see, the story is not just from birth to natural death. The story continues on into eternity. So it's never too late to start to write your story. You could think today, well... You know, I'm retired now, I'm such and such an age. Listen, you're only, uh, it reminds me of when I went to the bowls. Joe brought me to the bowls uh, down in Finnecke or somewhere, and he told the people it was my 60th birthday. And they said, oh, you could join our youth team. And, and so it's a bit like that in life. You might be in your 60s, your 70s, or 80s, and think, I really haven't written my story Begin now because you're just at the stage where you can get onto the youth team because you're, you're pre still preparing for eternity. And so this is not the end of our story. No matter where we are today, it's just the beginning of a new chapter. Hopefully today as we've spent time in God's presence, as we've just even brought this little dedication time together with Eli, hopefully God can challenge each one of us. He can encourage each one of us to begin afresh in a new way. Maybe many of us feel we really are writing our journal. We're writing the story of our lives. But maybe for some of us today, we think, 
no, I haven't been doing that. Maybe for some of us, we need to come to the Lord today and say, Lord, I served you once today. I'm not serving you. Or maybe, maybe we've never had an encounter with Jesus. We can come today and say, God, I want to give my life to you so that together we can write the story of my life that will last into eternity. Let's stand together as we worship.